Welcome back to the logical reasoning sessions of CU80. Today we have the first question in front of us. Select the option in which the words share the same relationship as shared by the given pair of words. The given pair is dentist to doctor. So dentist, doctor, there is a relation. And we have to consider the same relation among these answer choices and find an answer choice which is having the same relation with the dentist and doctor. So what is the relation dentist and doctor? Dentist is a doctor, correct? So that's the relation. Dentist is a doctor. And same way biology, astrology, chemistry, science, algebra, geometry, line, circle. So what do you think? Which would be the best answer? Since a dentist is a doctor, chemistry is a science. So the best answer, chemistry is a science. So these type of questions, this comes under the category verbal analogy. Analogy means what? Exact same kind of relation. I'll give you a couple of more examples. In this case, the answer is chemistry, science. Horse is to Stalin. Donkey is to what? It's a similar type of question, verbal analogy question. Here, horse and Stalin, there is a relation. We need to think about the same relation and just try to understand what exactly that relation is. Apply that exact same relation with the donkey as well. So, horse and Stalin. What is Stalin? What's the connection between Stalin and horse? Everybody knows what is horse. What is Stalin? Stalin is a male horse. Same way what we are looking for, donkey and male donkey. What's the name of a male donkey? Specific name for a male donkey? That's Jack. So, now onwards, remember, if anybody calls you a Jack, it is not really an appreciation. So, what? Jack means what? Male donkey. And next question. In a code language, if I like chocolates is written as 958, we bought chocolate is written as 153, and we like them is written as 816, then how would I bought them be written in that language? This is a coding decoding type question. Let's do it. I like chocolates. I like chocolates. And that's coded as 958, 958. In this case, we have no idea which of the word is represented by 9. It could be I, or it could be like, or it could be chocolate. And which one 5? Five? 5, well, it could be 5 represented represents either I, or like, or chalk. So it may not be in that necessary order, right? So we are not sure about which is the code for I, which is a code for like, but what we know, 9 would be the code for either one of this word, 5 is the code for any, any one of this word. Now let's look at the second one. We bought chocolates. We bought chocolates. And that's coded as what? 153, 153. Now we look at these two, which is common here? The common one, chocolates, right? So chocolates is common, chocolates is common. Which is which chord is common? Five. So five is a code for chocolates. And look at the next one. We like them. We like them. We like them. Now what's the code? Eight one six. Eight one six. And now Look at it. Oh, what is common between these two statements? Second and third statement. V is common, right? So V. And here we have V. Uh, which is a number common here? One is common, right? So one is a code for V. And like. Here we have like and here we have like. So if you take it, Take the statements 1 and 3, which one, which word is common? Like is common. Like is common. And here we have like. 
and when you take this codes statement 1 and statement 3 which code is common that's what here 958 here 816 so 8 is common right so 8 is common so 8 is a code for like so what we are looking for I bought them so this case we and like we have the code 8 and 1 for we and like and them so the code which represents them is what 6 so I bought them I bought them we need them so the code for them is what 6 and bought what is the code for boat here we have V and chalk the code for V and chalk is 1 and 5 the code for boat would be 3 so 6 3 then I so here like chalk like chocolates so here 5 and 8 is code for like and chocolates right so doesn't matter and here I I is left out so the code for I is 9 so 963 or 369 doesn't matter or 936 any order these numbers are in any order so when you look at 9 3 and 6 or 9 6 and 3 this is the letters we have 9 3 6 so that's a code for I bought them all right so we got the answer for that question in a class of 42 students Swath is rank is 19th from the bottom Purushottam is six ranks below Swathi what is Purushottam's rank from the top all right let's check it out we'll take an example let's say in a class there are 10 students one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten students and the uh, like rank of Nia is sixth from the top Nia Nia is sixth from the top and well Tom is two places below Nia Tom is two places below Nia then that case two places below that would be eighth place if Tom is two places below Nia what is the position of Tom from the end so this is the end from the end what is the position of Tom one two three so actually you know what the position of Tom is what eighth and from the backward or towards the from the end if you count it one two three so eight eighth is the position or three is the position so actually eight plus three is eleven total we have ten so eight plus three eleven minus one so always we have to take that minus one okay anyway when we do this question you get that clear idea 42 students Swadhi's rank is 19th from the bottom so Swadhi's rank is 19th from the bottom 19th from the bottom so that means there are 18 students below Swadhi Swadhi is 19th and Purushottam is 6 ranks below Swadhi so Purushottam is 6 ranks below Swadhi so then what is the rank of Purushottam first of all from the top we need to find the Purushottam ranks from the top first of all find the rank of Swadhi from the top there are 42 students total we have 19 here balance how many 42 minus 19 42 minus 20 is what 22 so balance is what 23 so there are 23 students before Swadhi that means from the top there are like 23 students before Swadhi and Swadhi is the 24th student when we look at from the top Swadhi is 24th and there are 18 students after her so in that is the case if Swadhi is 24th what is the Purushottam rank from the top Purushottam is six ranks below Swadhi if Swadhi is 24th from the top Swadhi is what 23 and uh, Swadhi 23 plus Swadhi 24th from the top so that means Purushottam would be six ranks below that so 24 plus 6 30 so the rank of Purushottam from the top would be 30 that's what it is okay next one number 54 if the minute hand of a clock point towards south at 12 a.m. 12 a.m. usually you know what 
12 a.m., the two hands of the clock would be like this. This is 12. 12 a.m., the two hands of the clock would be in this direction. That's a minute hand and this is the hour hand. So the minute hand of a clock point towards south. Actually, this direction is north. And in our question, it is given as the minute hand point towards the south. So that means this clock is exactly inverted, just inverted. So this 12 must be somewhere here. So this is how the clock is placed. 12 is here. So, well, this is 9, this is 3, and this is 6. That's a normal clock. But when the clock is inverted, what happens? 12 is here, 6 is here, and where is 9? This is 6. So, where is 9, where is 3? So, if it is turned like this. Okay, so 3 goes here, and 9 goes here. And at 12 o'clock, this is what it is. The minute hand of the clock would be pointing towards south. And what is the next, uh, next sentence? Then in which direction will be the minute hand pointing at 3 a.m.? So 3 a.m., it would be like this. This is the hour hand. This is the minute hand. So minute hand would be, again, pointing towards south. At 12, the minute hand is pointing south. That means at 3, the minute hand would be pointing south as well. So the answer is south. Now 55, select the option in which the number set shares. Number set shares the same relationship as shared by the given number set. So there is a relation between these numbers, 17, 24, and 45. 17, 24, 45, what's the connection? 17 plus seven is 24. And 24 plus 21 is 45. And we can see that 7 into 3 is 21. All right, so the difference is 17 plus 7 is 24. 24 plus 21 is 45. So that is that is the pattern we see at a glance. There could be other possibilities. We might look at that possibilities later if it doesn't work. And look at here. And we are looking for the same relation. Okay, so we are looking for a pair with the same relation. 19 plus 7 is 26. 26 plus 21 is not 34. So the first one doesn't give you the answer. 15 plus 5 is 20. Actually, it is the first difference would be 7. That cannot be the answer. 18 and 23. Well, 18 plus 7 is not 23. We don't get the answer from that as well. So 12 plus 7 is 19. 19 plus 21 is 40. Perfectly all right. So the answer is 12, 19, and 40. We got it. Next one. Record language block is written as 3, 1, 3, 1, 6, 4, 1, 2. So block. Three, one, three, one, six, four, one, two. Four, one, two. Well, how many letters are here? One, two, three, four, five, right? How many numbers are here? How many digits? One, two, well, it's three. Three plus three is six. Six plus two, eight. If it is five letters and five numbers, then definitely we can think about each letter is called as two numbers, two, two digits. But in this case, it is five and this, when, the, when you count the digits, it's eight. So that doesn't make any sense at all. Is there any other possibility you can think of it? Because the position value, so just write the position values of numbers here, I mean letters here. 3, this is 12, this is 15, this is, okay, well, the first one is not 3, it's 2. B is 2, this is 12, this is 15, this is 3, and this is 11. And that case, how many digits are here? 1, 2, 3, 5, well, 1 digit. Three digits, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exact eight digits. All right. So now we got an idea. Probably, you know what? Uh, these letters are coded as some kind of digits based on their position values. So let's take a look at that way. 
I'm pretty sure some of you got the answer by this time. So first, uh, the let I mean numbers here three one three one six. So three one three one six four one two. Here b is what position value of b is two. So now b is written as what three. So b plus one, two plus one is three, and l is what twelve. 12 plus 1 is 13. So 15. 15 plus 1 is 16. And C. That is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. And this is 11. 11 plus 1 is 12. So ultimately, that is the way it is coded. So this is pretty much a coding decoding question. Then how will the supreme be written in that language? So supreme. What's the code for supreme? Supreme is called as what? S plus 1. S plus 1 is what? S, plus, S is 19. So 19 plus 1, it's 20. U plus 1. U is what? 21 plus 1, 22. This is 16. So 17. It's 18. So 19. This is 5. So 6. 13. So that means 14 here. And this is 6 again. So it is 20, 22, 17, 19. Well, 20, 22, 17, 19, this one is correct here. This one is not correct. And uh, well, yeah, that's the only one we have. Only one correct answer choice. 20, 22, 17, 19, then 6, 1, 4, 6, perfectly all right. So answer choice 1. In this case, there are two couples in a family. Komali has two children. Mathurima is the wife of Om Prakash. And Om Prakash, who is the brother of Mani, and Pinky is the daughter of Komali, and Urmila is the sister of Sanchu, and well, Sanchu, who is the son of Om Prakash, Tarun is the son of Mani, and Mani, who is a male. Then how is Mathurima related to Komali? Well, Komali, you can either North India, that name is pronounced as Komali, but when it's when we pronounce in Malayalam, we can call it out Komali, right? It doesn't matter. Anyway, Komali or Komali, whoever it is. So we have to look at the tree diagram here. This is a blood relation type question. So how do you make that diagram? What it is given to us, Komali has two children. So we'll start from Komali. She has two children. And who are those children? We have no idea. Mathurima is the wife of Om Prakash. Mathurima. So here we have two couples. Komali has two children. So Komali may have a partner. A Komali is either male or a female. We have no idea. Komali will have either husband or a wife. So one set of pairs is there. I mean one set of couple is there. There are two couples. And the next couple is Mathurima is the wife of Om Prakash. So Mathurima and Om Prakash, they are married as well. Mathurima, Om Prakash. Mathurima is the wife of Om Prakash. So Mathurima is a female. Om Prakash is a male. So when it comes to blood relation, you may mark the gender of people using this method as well. So you can use your own method. But if you don't have a specific method of marking it, this is what I do. I just use this symbol for female and this for male. Okay, anyway, Mathurima is the wife of Om Prakash. Om Prakash, who is the brother of money? Om Prakash is the brother of money. So this is Om Prakash. Om Prakash has a brother, Mani. Pinky is the daughter of Komali. Okay, Pinky is the daughter of Komali. So Komali is here, Pinky is the daughter. So Komali has two children, one is a daughter. And Urmila is the sister of Sanju. And who is Sanju? Sanju who is the son of Om Prakash. So Om Prakash has a son, Sanju. So let, let's write Om Prakash here. And this is, who is the wife of Om Prakash, Madhurima. So Madhurima, so female. And of course they have a son. Son is what? Who? Sanchu. Sanchu is the son of Om Prakash. And at the same time, Urmila is the sister of Sanchu. So Sanchu has a sister that's Urmila. So Om Prakash and Madhurima, they have two children. One is Sanchu and one is Urmila. Okay. Tarun is the son of Mani. Who is Mani? Mani is the brother of Om Prakash. 
So this is Om Prakash. Mani is the brother of Om Prakash. So there are two couples here. So ultimately, we can assume that this Komali is married to Mani. And Mani, who is the brother, so he is a male. And Komali must be the female. So Komali is the mother of Pinky and Mani is the father of Pinky. And at the same time it says that Tarun is the son of Mani. So Mani, Tarun is the son of Mani means Tarun is the son of Mani and Komali, right? So Tarun is a son, so that's, he's a male. Then, uh, well, Tarun is the son of Mani. Mani, who is a male? Okay, definitely Mani is a male because who is the brother of Mani? Who is the brother? Om Prakash is the brother of Mani, right. So here it's clearly given that Mani is a male. So it's confirmed, Mani is a male. Then the question, how is Madhurima related to Komali? So here, you see that relation. Om Prakash and Mani are brothers. And the relation what we are looking for, Mathurima and Komali. Mathurima is the wife of Om Prakash and Komali is the wife of Mani. Mani and Om Prakash, they are brothers. So ultimately, Komali and Mathurima, they are sister-in-law. That's the relation between them, sister-in-law. So, well, if you are brother's wife or sister's husband, all those people. So if your brother's wife, it's a sister-in-law. At the same time, is there any other sister-in-law? Brother's wife, sister-in-law. At the same time, your husband's sister is sister-in-law as well. Brother's wife, husband's sister. All those possibilities are there, sister-in-law. All right, next question, number 58. Number 58, this is a logical Venn diagram type question. What is it, logical Venn diagram? Select the Venn diagram that best illustrates the relationship among the following classes. Which are the classes? Uncle, relatives, and rich. So we need to have one circle represents uncle, and one of the circle represent relatives and one of the circle represents rich. So uncle, relatives, rich. So, well, we know that uncle is a relative. Uncle is a relative. So uncle must be inside the circle of what? Relatives. This is relative circle. All uncles are relatives. Correct? At the same time, next thing what we are looking for is rich. Well, some of your uncles are rich, right? Some of your relatives are rich as well. So rich must be intersecting uncles and relatives. So this is relative, all uncles are relatives. And now we are looking for rich. And rich diagram would be rep cutting these two. That means rich would be cutting uncle and relatives. So some of the relatives are rich, some of your uncles are rich as well. So that's the best diagram represent the uh, three items, uncle, relatives, and rich. So among the answer choice, which is a diagram, this is the diagram, fourth one. If you look at the second diagram, if you look at the second, I mean, you look at the third diagram, here the rich is cutting only the relatives. Some of your relatives are rich, but some of your uncles are not really rich. So this diagram is not correct. This is the correct diagram most appropriate diagram. Well, this question, read the given statements and conclusions carefully, assuming that the information given in the statements is true, even if they, even if it appears to be variance with the commonly known facts. Decide which of the given conclusions logically follow from the statement. Which of the conclusions logically follow from the statements. So what type of a question it is? This is a deduction or syllogism type question. So what are the statements here? All polygons are angles, all, all angles are diagonals, all cones are cubes, all cubes are decagons, no diagonal is a cube. So how many? Five statements are there. So we need to draw the diagram for all those statements. What kind of a diagram? Diagram with the minimum overlap. 
it is known as basic diagram. So we are going to draw the basic diagram and probably you remember in the last discussion, previous video, we have drawn diagram for each kind of statement, for all statement, for some statement, no statement and some not statement. Here what kind of statements we have? We have all statement, all statement, all, all and this is no statement. So let's draw it. All poly polygons are angles. All polygons are angles. So angles. And all angles are diagonals. So all angles are what? Diagonals. This is polygons. And all cones are cubes. Well, all cones are cubes. All cubes are decagons. All cones. These are cones. Cones are cubes. And next one, all cubes are decagons. All cubes are what? Decagons. These are cubes. All cubes are decagons. And no diagonal is a cube. So this is a diagonal, this is a cube. So there is no intersection between diagonal and cube. Or we may use a different color for that, for that arrow. This is what it is. So the arrow mean by, what is the meaning of this arrow? This diagonal cannot intersect with the cube. That is what the meaning of arrow. No diagonal is a cube. At the same time, diagonal may intersect with the decagon. It doesn't say that. Any of the statement, it doesn't say that. No diagonal is a decagon. It says that no diagonal is a cube. So diagonal and cube cannot intersect. But you know what, diagonal and decagon may intersect if, it's, if it recurs. And that is what exactly it is given to us in the statements. So now look at the conclusions. So conclusion, the first conclusion, some diagonals are polygons. Some diagonals are polygons. Actually, all polygons are inside diagonals. That means some of the diagonals are definitely polygons. So first one follows. Second conclusion, all diagonals are decagons. All diagonals are decagons. There is no intersection between diagonal and decagon in the diagram we have drawn according to the statements. So there is no intersection between diagonal and decagon. So all diagonals are decagon, invalid, so it doesn't follow. Now the third one, no polygon is a cone. No polygon is a cone. So look at polygon, look at cone. There is no intersection between polygon and cone. Third conclusion. No polygon is a cone. That's correct. This is cone. That's correct. So it is valid for the basic diagram. Since it's valid for the basic diagram, well, if it is a positive conclusion, if it is valid for the basic diagram, then definitely it follows. But this is a negative conclusion. For a negative conclusion, it is a bit tricky. So anytime if you have negative conclusion, you know what? You, what you are supposed to do, if negative conclusion is valid for the basic diagram, there is another step which is involved in that. So you have to negate this conclusion, negate the original conclusion. This conclusion is no polygon is a cone. When you negate it, negation means negative conclusion become what? Positive conclusion. That's called negation. So when you negate it, no become what? Sum. So no polygon is a cone become what? Some polygons are cones. That is what you get. So we negated it and once you negate it, we have to draw a new diagram using this negated conclusion. So new diagram using the negated conclusion. So some polygons are cones. So polygon, this is polygon. Some polygons are what? Cones. This is cone. 
At the same time, you know what, all other things must remain as it is, no change at all. So polygons are inside what angles, so all angles, all polygons are angles, so we have to draw the angle like this. All polygons are angles and all angles are diagonals, all angles are diagonals. At the same time, all cones are cubes, all cones are what, cubes. And all cubes are decagons, all cubes are what, decagons. In this case, what we are looking at, some polygons are cones. That is a diagram we have drawn, some polygons are cones. Now we have to look at this diagram, check this diagram with the given statements. Look at the first statement, all polygons are angles. Yes, all polygons are angles, there is no issue. All angles are diagonals, all angles are diagonals. Of course, all angles are diagonals. All cones are cubes, all cones, well look at all cones here, they are all cubes and all cubes are decagons, all cubes are decagons and last one it says no diagon is a cube, no diagon is a cube. This case when you look at that some of the diagonals are cubes, what's the statement says no diagonal is a cube but here when you look at the new diagram you can see that some of the diagonals are intersecting with the cubes here. This is diagonal and this is cube, so they are intersecting. So that means this diagram contradicts the given statement. Given statement, one of the given statement is what? No diagonal is a cube. This diagram doesn't contradict statement number one, two, three or four, but this diagram contradict fifth statement. That means if the diagram contradicts this new diagram, if it contradicts any one of the given statement, the diagram doesn't exist. That means this diagram doesn't exist. If this diagram doesn't exist, that means this diagram is drawn based on the negated conclusion. Negated conclusion. What is the negated conclusion? Some polygons are cones. So if the diagram doesn't exist, then some polygons are cones is invalid. Invalid. If it is invalid, well negated conclusion is invalid means original conclusion is valid, valid for this new diagram as well. Well, the new diagram doesn't exist. The reason for that, no polygon is a cone is correct. So it is valid for the basic diagram and we have checked it and we found that, well, it it's correct for the new diagram as well. You may wonder why have we done it this way and we got this as invalid and finally we confirm it is valid and it follows as well, it follows as well. So why have we done all these steps? The reason for that, some of the cases, you know what, no polygon is a cone if it's a negative conclusion, if it is valid for the basic diagram and when we draw a new diagram using negated conclusion, that new diagram may exist, there is a possibility. If new diagram exists, the negated conclusion is valid for the new diagram. If negated conclusion is valid for the new diagram, then you know what, the original conclusion, if negated conclusion is valid, original conclusion must be invalid, invalid for the new diagram. If a conclusion is valid, it must be, if conclusion follows, it must be valid for the basic diagram and it must be valid for the new diagram as well. Basic diagram is the minimum with the, I mean the diagram with the minimum overlap and this new diagram, it's a diagram with the maximum overlap. So we have drawn these two diagrams. There are many other diagrams possible in between, we haven't drawn all those diagrams. So the conclusion follows only if the conclusion is valid for all possible situations, all possible diagrams. So in order to check that, we, check with, we checked with basic diagram 
and it is valid. However, since it is negative, we have a confusion. So we have negated it and we checked with the new diagram. New diagram means the diagram with the maximum overlap. And finally, in this case, we have confirmed that third conclusion follows. It may not be the case always. If you have a negative conclusion which is valid for the basic diagram, it may not be valid for the new diagram. In this case, it is valid for basic diagram and the new diagram. However, in all cases that may not happen. That's the reason we have drawn the new diagram and we have checked it out. So be aware of it. And uh, of course, you know what, if you have any kind of confusion or negative uh, conclusions, I'll send you some YouTube videos on deductions and syllogism. Let me know if you need those videos. That's, these videos are uploaded uh, in a YouTube. If you search for the walnut training, the walnut training, W-A-L-N-U-T, walnut training on YouTube, you may see a lot of videos. And among those videos, there are nine videos that are dedicated for deductions or syllogism. If you look at those videos, you can see that some of the videos, I think uh, video number three or four, it is specifically based on negative conclusions. So you can look at those videos and you get a much more better idea than what we have discussed here. And those who got the idea, perfectly all right. I'm pretty sure some of you have gone through NTSE, you know what is deductions, what is syllogism, how to deal with negative conclusions, you must be good. That's the reason I haven't explained it further. If anybody needs further clarification, definitely I'll share you the videos as well. So let me know through your course coordinator if I need to share or you just search it in the YouTube as I have mentioned the walnut training. Number 60. Which answer figure will complete the pattern in the question figure? Which answer figure will complete the pattern in the question figure? So this is the question figure and this part is missing. So this part is missing. So which is that part? Look at this. The first one. This is a shape, right? So this is a shape what we are looking for. This is what it is. So which is it? Give me a second. Let me draw it more accurately without confusion. So this way. This is. So which is that? answer choice. At a glance you can see that this is the answer choice. But when, when we invert this answer choice, the answer choice 3, the other way, that is correct as well. So it is a bit confusing here, 1 or 3. Anyhow, so since 1 is directly given, so we'll mark that answer 1. If 1 is not given this way, 1 is given in some different ways, then that case 3 would be the answer choice as well. Because when you invert it, 3 would be the exact correct, correct pattern as well. All right, so next one. Which number will follow the next uh, in the given series? Okay, so that's a number series question. 3, 16, 29, 42. Seems like a straightforward question. Let's look at it. 3, 16, 29, 42. So what are the differences here? 3 plus 13 is 16. 16 plus 13 is 29. 29 plus 13 is 42. So 13, 13, 13. So next one, 42 plus 13. That would be 55. So the answer right here. Number 62. Six friends A, B, C, D, E and F are sitting around a round table facing the center. C is seated between A and B. B is in the immediate left of D. And if C is facing E, who is facing F? That's the case. So let's take a look at this. It's a circular arrangement. It's a seating arrangement type question. So it's the circular arrangement. These people are sitting around a circular table. There are six friends. So well, one, two, 
3, 4, 5, 6. The first part of the question, C is seated between A and B. So C, all of them are facing the center. So C is here, C is between A and B, A and B. Or it could be the other way, A can be here and B can be here as well. So that depends, we'll check it out whether A is here or A is here, doesn't matter. Anyway, C is between A and B. And B is immediate left of D. So B must be immediate left of D, so that means well, if B comes over here, D is here, D is facing this direction, so that means B is immediate left of D, perfectly all right. On the other hand, if you look at the other way, one, two, three, four, five, six. If you take C here, then B here and A here. So this is again C is between A and B. So this case if B is here then B must be where? Immediate left of D. So that case D if D comes over here D is facing the center then B is immediate right. So that cannot be the case. So this is the case. So that case B A is here and B is here. C is here. Okay fine. So B is immediate left of D. And if C is facing E, C is facing E, <coughs> then who is facing F? So there is only one place is missing right here. So F must be here. And who is facing B? That is F. So B and F are facing each other. So who is facing F? That must be B. But always remember one thing. All of these people are facing the center. All of these people are facing the center. Since they are facing the center for C, if C is facing the center, you know what, this is the left hand side of C and this is the right hand side of C. B is facing the center, this is the left hand side of B, this is the right hand side. And D is facing the center, this is the left hand side, this is the right hand side. And E is facing the center, so this is the left hand side and this is the right hand side. And F is facing the center, this is the left and this is the right. And A is facing the center, this is the left and this is the right. That's how it is. Number 63. Select the correct option that will fill the blank and complete the series. D, M, T, F, K, V, I, H, Y, M, D, C. It is similar to what the lecture series questions we have discussed earlier. Let's take a look at that. D, M, T, F, K, V, F, K V I H Y I H Y M D C M D C. So we take that first letters or first letter of each set. So D F D plus two is F F plus three is I. So position values are like four, six. I is nine and M is 13. So 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 plus 3 is 9, 9 plus 4 is 13. So 2, 3, 4, next one must be 5. So 13 plus 5 is what? 18. So 18 the letter is R. So how many answer choices are starting from R? Well, three answer choices are starting from R. So this cannot be the answer. So that is already out. Now look at the second letters, M, K, M is 13, K is 11, so minus 2 and this is 11 and this is 8. Let me write it down. So this is 13, this is 11, this H is what, 8, so this is minus 2, 13 minus 2 is 11, 11 minus 3 is 8, 8 minus 4 is 4, then 4 Next one is minus 5. So 4 minus 5. So 4 minus 5, how much you get? Minus 1. So minus 1, which letter is minus 1? We know that we have discussed last time. So if it is, let's say, A. A is 1. The letter before A is Z. So C is 0. And Y, Y is what? Minus 1. So minus 1, the letter is Y. 
So our second letter is going to be Y R Y. And look at the answer choice. How many answer choices are starting from R Y? There's only one answer choice. So R Y H would be the final answer. In the following question, two statements are given each followed by two conclusions one and two. You have to consider the statements to be true even if they seem to be at variance from the commonly known facts. So these are pretty much what deduction type of questions. However, the direction is exactly for deduction type of questions but when you look at the statements, if it's a deduction question, it usually that statements are starting from all, some, no, some, not. But this case it is different. Major companies are nowadays surviving because of the strong supply chain system. And well, second statement, supply chain comprises of logistics, retailers and distributors. So here what is given, assume that the statements are given concluded by, okay, so well, you have to consider the statements to be true. So these two statements are true. What are the statements? Major companies are nowadays surviving because of the strong supply chain system. And the supply chain comprises of logistics, retailers and distributors. And we have to look at the conclusions. Here, we don't need to draw the diagram because this is not a detection or syllogism type question. So what we have to do is look at the conclusions and apply your common sense. So this is critical reasoning type question. So statement and conclusion type question in critical reasoning. So conclusion number one, retailers play most important role because they interact with the customers on first hand. Well, retailers play most important role. Is there anything about retailers given over here? Supply chain comprises of logistics retailers? Yes, that's correct. So retailer is given here. Retailers play the most important role because they interact with the customers. Customer interaction between the retailer and well, that's not really mentioned any of the statements. Retailer is a part of what supply chain? That's what it is given. Retailer play most important role. So that is not really given here. Supply chain comprises of logistics retailer and distributor. However, it doesn't mean that retailer play the most important role. Maybe the role of logistics retailers and distributors would be equal. We have no idea because the statement doesn't say anything like that. So the first one we are not sure about whether this conclusion follow the statement or not. Number two. If an organization has strong logistics, then the product can easily be available to the customers in such an era of competition. So if an organization has strong logistics, then the product can easily be available to the customers in such an era of competition. So what's the statement says? Major companies are nowadays surviving. Major companies are surviving because of the strong supply chain, right? So what that strong supply chain does? So strong supply chain, what it does? An organization has strong logistics, then the product can easily be avail to, available to the customers in such an era of competition. So that company would be successful. That means second statement, yes. That's correct. Second statement, follow the, I mean, second conclusion, follow the statements. First one, doubtful. We are not 100% sure about if it is, if we are not 100% sure about the statement, we cannot say that the statement follow the statement follows the conclusion. We cannot really say that. So first statement doesn't follow the, I mean, first conclusion doesn't follow the statement and second conclusion, it follows the statement. That's what it is. All right. So the answer is what? Only two follows. The first, first answer choice, only two follows. That's the answer. Right, next one. Select the correct option that related to the third term in the same way as the second term is related to the first term. So there is a relation here. Television and telecast. Television and telecast. Same way radio and what? So television, telecast, right? So radio, broadcast, friendship, compose, talking. So what is the answer? Television, telecast, then radio, it's broadcast. It's a broadcast. So it's pretty much 
what is called verbal analogy question. I'll give you a few more examples for verbal analogy. There are many varieties of verbal analogy questions usually appear for uh, this kind of exams, competitive exams. So one of the verbal analogy we have mentioned earlier, horse is to Stalin same way, donkey is to what? Donkey is to Jack. So that's uh, animal and the male animal. So if you continue on that, there are many other animals. The male, the name of the male may not be really familiar to you. For example, like uh, donkey is to Jack. Then cat is to what? Cat is to what? Donkey and Jack. Well, the donkey and the male donkey is Jack. So cat and the male cat. What's a cat and the male cat? What is sheep? Sheep and the male sheep. Deer. Male deer. How about duck? Which is a male duck. What's the name of the male duck? And how about chicken? Name of the male chicken. How about elephant? Well, uh, we have a lot of discussions about the elephants or as specifically one of the elephant recently. So what is a male elephant? So Ari Kamban was in the news for many days or probably many weeks. And recently there is an in interview with uh, Arun Sikriya, the veterinary surgeon who made that shoot, right? Okay, he mentioned about Ari Kamban. He said that male elephant. He used a specific name to mention male elephant. Bull elephant. Bull elephant doesn't have a family. That is what he said. Bull elephant doesn't stick on to a family. So whether it sticks on to family or not, that's not important for us. For us, the male elephant is what? Bull elephant. And what's a female elephant? It's a cow elephant. So male elephant is what? Bull. And chicken, what's a male chicken? Male chicken is rooster. And duck, male duck, any idea? Male duck is drake. Female duck is duck itself. And by the way, these are the male ones and female ones, we'll write the female ones here. So elephant bull, male is bull, female is cow. Chicken, male is rooster, female is what? Hen. And duck, male is drake, and female is duck itself, duck. And how about deer? Male deer, any idea? Male deer is buck, female deer, doe. Especially if you visit zoo, you may look at the cage of this deer, where the deer is kept. Usually in many, most of the zoos, the number of animals kept inside that cage is written in front of the cage. So next time if you visit any of the zoo, just look at what is the number displayed. You can see that usually they write number of bucks, bucks, let's say 24 bucks and doe. 32 does, 24 bucks, 32 does and uh, young ones as well. What is the young one of uh, deer? They may write that number as well. So it is what young one is? Fawn. So they may write, let's say, 11 fawns. So that's what it is. So male, I mean, deer, male, female, young one. And duck, drake, duck. So male, female, and young one of duck is what? Duckling. Duckling. And chicken, the male chicken is rooster, female is hen, and the young one is what? Chick. And how about elephant? Male is bull, female is cow, young one is, what's the young one of elephant? Calf. And how about sheep? Male sheep. Male sheep, what is the name of male sheep? Any idea? Male sheep is ram. Female is? U, E-W-E, U. 
and the young one of sheep. Any idea? Sheep, young one is lamb. How about cat? Male cat is Tom. Female? Female cat. Female cat is either known as she cat or queen cat. And some of you may have that name which comes to the tip of your tongue is pussy cat, right? Well, pussy cat is not really a female cat. Again, the word pussy, well, in formal situations, we may not use that word pussy because it has a different meaning as well. So, pussy cat may not be the name which may be used for a female cat in formal situations. And the young one of the cat, everybody knows that, I believe. Kitten. How about donkey? Male donkey is Jack. Female donkey is she ass. She ass. And young one of donkey? Young one of donkey is either colt or like, uh, there is different names for that. Usually we call it colt or uh, there are a couple of more names for that donkey young one. If it comes to the top of my brain, then I'll just give you what they One of it is called, then it is fall. Yeah, there's another name, it's fall, F-O-A-L, fall. And there's another name for it, it's Philly. So young one of uh, donkey is either called fall or Philly. That's similar one for horse as well, horse. Young one of horse is either called fall or Philly. And how about the male horse? We have mentioned that earlier, Stalin. And female horse, female horse is mare. And the young one of horse, similar to this, of, similar to that of donkey, called fall or Philly. And how about like goat? We mentioned about sheep and deer. How about goat? What's a male goat? Male goat is buck, similar to that of deer. Buck. Or there is another name for the male goat. Any idea? Buck. I want you to check it out. So goat, buck, and what's a female goat? Female goat. If it's male is buck, female must be doe. Or there is another name for it. Nani. If female is called Nani, then male is called Billy. If male is called buck, female is called doe. It is something like if uh, the male is called husband, the female is called wife. If the male is called Sriman, then the wife is called Srimadi. So that's the case. Actually, pretty much these two things are similar. However, if buck is used to indicate the male, then female must be do. Buck and do, one set. The other set is what? Billy and Nani. So both of this interchangeably used for goat. Goat male is buck or billy. And female is do or nani. And what is a young one of goat? That's the most interesting question. How many of you have the answer? Young one of goat. Lamp? Well, young one of sheep is lamp. Young one of goat is what? Kid. Always remember this. Young one of goat is kid. It is not lamp. All right. So this is pretty much uh, about the animals. And of course, we have a few more animals, the most important ones. You have to be aware of the lion as well, lion, tiger, all those kind of animals. Tiger, wolf, all those kind of animals. Fox. Okay, lion. Male lion is lion itself. Female lion is what? Lioness. And young one of the lion is what? Cub. Tiger again. Male tiger is tiger. Female tiger is tigress. And young one is cub. And wolf. Male wolf. Either he wolf or dog. And female wolf. She-wolf or bitch. 
and young one of wolf cub and fox male fox is what any idea male fox male fox is wix v i x wix female fox is vixen and one is what cup that's how it is and any other one which come to your mind all right whale whale the male whale is what it's bull whale female is cow Young one is calf. And these are the major animals. And of course, uh, cattle. Cattle, what's a male cattle? Bull or ox. Usually we use bull. And uh, cow, female is cow. And the young one is calf as well. These are verbal analogy questions from animal kingdom apart from animal kingdom you may have questions from sometimes you know what objects and sounds clock ticks bell what bell rings then cloud what's the sound of the cloud any idea what's the sound of the engine uh, what's the sound of the wind what's the sound of wheels what's the sound of horn What's the sound of drum? What is the sound of the frying pan? So these are, comes under the category objects and sounds. Come, again, that comes under the category verbal analogy. So let's say bell rings. Clock. Everybody knows that. What's the sound of the clock? Clock ticks. How about cloud? Cloud, the sound of the cloud is thunder, right? So cloud thunders. How about the sound of the engine? Engine whistles. That engine makes whistling sound. Well, now you know what the most modern engines, especially electric engines, that doesn't make any sound at all. These are the sounds which used by the people at, at the origin of the English language. So that time when the engine was invented, what was the sound of the engine, especially the steam engine? That makes whistling sound every now and then. So that is why they use that sound, whistles, for, uh, to indicate the engine. The sound of the engine, what? Whistles. And what else do you have? So let's say leaves. What's the sound of the leaves? Leaves rustle. Rustling sound. And what's the sound of the wheels? Wheels make rattling sound. Wheels rattle. Wheels rustle and wheels rattle. And how about rain? Rain patters. That's the sound of the rain. Patters. And how about train? Train rumbles. The sound of the train. Train is what? Rumbles. Rumbling sound. So rain patters. Train rumbles. And what's the sound of the wind? I'm pretty sure many of you have the answer as what? Wind blows. Actually, blowing is an action, right? It's a verb. So wind blows. Yeah, that's correct. Wind blows. However, that's not the sound of the wind. And what's the sound of the wind? Wind sighs. Sighs. What's the Malayalam meaning of sighs? Nadu virp. Okay, so wind sighs. So any other object you handle on everyday life at your home or anywhere else? So let's say a frying pan. Okay, frying pan. What's the sound of frying pan? I'm pretty sure. Doesn't matter you use a frying pan or not. You must have heard the sound many times. The sound of the frying pan in the kitchen. Because when you are 
hungry, you definitely you listen to the sound. Or the sound of this frying pan makes makes you hungry as well, right? So frying pan, it sizzles, sizzling sound. And many other things as well, actually. Apart from this, you may have phobias. So what's the cause for the phobia and the phobias? That is another set of questions that comes under the category. What is it? Verbal analogy. Then you have uh, country and their capital, country and their currency. All those things comes under the category verbal analogy. Now we have uh, question number 66. We are looking at Mohini. Mohini is taller than Nita, but not shorter than Sarida. And Sarida and Malini are of same height. Mohini is shorter than Hema. Then among them, who is the second tallest? So we need to find out who is the second tallest. That's a question. All right, so look at this. Let's make an arrangement. Mohini is taller than Nita. Mohini, it's taller than Nita, but not shorter than Sarida. Mohini is not shorter than Sarida. So that means Mohini is not shorter than Sarida means either Mohini and Sarida are of same height or Sarida is shorter than Mohini. So Mohini, well, Sarida, then Nita. So these are the possibilities. Sarida and Malini are of same height. Okay, so Sarida and Malini are of same height. So Sarida, Malini, they are having the same height. Mohini is shorter than Hema. So Mohini is shorter than Hema. Among them, who is the second tallest? Second tallest. Okay, let's look at this way. We have Nita, we have Mohini, and we have uh, Hema. Uh, what's the possibility of Sarita? Sarita is having either the same height of Mohini And uh, if Sarida is having the same height of Mohini, then Malini is having the same height of Sarida. So ultimately, you know what, Mohini, Sarida and Malini are of the same height. That's one of the possibility we have. Another possibility, we look at the second possibility. This is possibility one. Second possibility, we have Nita, then you know what? Mohini is not shorter than Sarida, but Sarida can be shorter than Mohini. So this is Mohini and Sarida are having the same height. Now Sarida is shorter than Mohini. Sarida is shorter than Mohini. And Sarida and Malini is having the same height. And Mohini is taller than the Sarida and Malini, right? Then this is what? Hema. And well, next possibility, Hema from the tallest one, Hema, then we have uh, Mohini, then we have Nita, then we can have Sarida and Malini. So there are many combinations possible here. Ultimately, what we are looking for is the second tallest. Second tallest, Hema is the tallest. There is no confusion on that. Hema is the tallest. Second tallest could be in this arrangement. It could be Mohini or Sarida or Malini. In this arrangement, second tallest is Mohini. So ultimately, the answer for, I mean, the person who is second tallest could be either Mohini or Sarida or Malini. So we have no idea. So ultimately, the answer is what? Cannot be determined. That's the answer. Now 67. Ramesh is the father of Mantip. Okay, so Ramesh is the father of Manidip. All right, so Ramesh is the father of Manidip. And Ramesh is, since it's a father, we know that it's a male, so I mark it with the symbol male. So Ramesh is the father of Manidip. 
Ramesh has only two children. One is Manideep and the other one is what? Manideep is the med, uh, brother of Niharika. So Manideep and Niharika. Ma Manideep is the brother, so he's a male. Niharika could be male or a female, we have no idea. Niharika is the daughter of Kavita. Okay, so Niharika is the daughter, so that's a female. Nihari is, a, is the daughter of Kavita. That means Niharita's mother, Kavita, is married to who? Ramesh. So Ramesh Kavita couple, they have two children. One is Manideep, the other one is Niharika. And Ananya is the granddaughter of Kavita. Ananya is the granddaughter of Kavita. This is Kavita. Ananya is the granddaughter. So that means that Ananya would be the daughter of Manideep or the daughter of Niharika. We'll check it out. Ananya is the granddaughter of Kavita. Sujit is the father of An Ananya. Well, if Ananya is the granddaughter of Kavita, then Ananya must be the daughter of Manideep or Niharika. But here it's clearly given that Ananya's father is Sujit. So if Ananya is Manideep's daughter, then the father of Ananya must be Manideep. So that is not the case. So now we can clearly visualize here. Ananya is the daughter of Niharika. And Niharika is married to who? Sujit. So Sujit is the father of Ananya. Now that case, how is Sujit related to Manideep? Look at that. Sujit, this is Sujit. And Sujit's wife, Niharika. Niharika's brother is Manideep. So how is Sujit related to Manideep? From the Manideep point of view, who is Sujit? Manideep's sister's husband. So sister's husband, who is it? Brother-in-law. So that's the answer. So Sujit is the brother-in-law of Manideep. Or Man, Manideep is the brother-in-law of Sujit. So here the question, how is Sujit related to Manideep? So Manideep's point of view, who is Sujit? So Manideep's point of view, Sujit is the brother-in-law. Number 68. Which two signs or numbers need to be interchanged to make the given equation correct. So the given equation is 8 divided by 2 plus 4 is equal to 10. And the first answer to is, says that you have to interchange the symbols divided by and plus. At the same time you have to swap the numbers 8 and 4. Second answer to is, says about like swapping that symbols, just the symbols divided by in the position of plus and plus in the position of divided by. So anyway, we have to do the trial and error in this case. So let's start from the first answer choice. Eight. So here we are replacing. So eight divided by two plus four is equal to 10. That's the original equation. So now we are trying the equation, I mean, uh, answer choice one. Eight. Uh, 8 and 4 must be replaced, right? So 8 and 4 must be replaced. So instead of 8, we need to have 4 here. And at the place of 4, 8 must be there. And the symbols must be replaced as well. I mean, so plus must be here. Then we have 2 divided by must be here, equal 10. So when you apply both mass, this is what happens. 2 by 8. 2 by 8 is 1 by 4. So 4 plus 1 by 4 is equal to 10. Cannot be the case. So first one cannot be the correct answer. Second answer choice, we'll try 8 at the position of 8. 8 stays as it is. No change. These two symbols must be interchanged. Divided by 2, 4. That's equal to 10. So well, 2 by 4, 1 by 2, right? 2 by 4 is 1 by 2. So 8 plus 1 by 2, that's 10. No way. That's not correct. This one is not correct. So this is not the answer. Now we are looking for the third answer choice. Well, 8 and 2 must be interchanged. So 8 and 2. So 2 comes over here. 
8 comes over here, 4 as it is and the symbols must be changed as well, plus and divided by, so plus comes over here, divided by, that's equal to 10, but 8 by 4 is 2, right, and 2 plus 2, what is it, 10, no way, doesn't work, now we'll try the last one, And here this we have to change the symbols and the numbers as well. 2 and 4 must be interchanged, 8 as it is, no change. So 2 and 4 must be interchanged and the symbols plus and divided by. So instead of divided by, we'll have plus. Instead of plus, we will have divided by. That's equal to 10. Naturally, this is going to be the answer because we don't have any other answer choice. Because first answer choice, second answer choice, third answer choice, these are not correct so 4 is going to be the answer but anyway we'll check it out and find out so here 4 by 2 4 by 2 is 2 so 8 plus 2 is what 10 correct so the last answer choice is the correct answer number 69 what is the question from a point D Sarida walked 50 meters to the north then after turning to right walked another 50 meters, she again turned right and walked another 70 meters. So this is pretty much direction sense question. So how do we do deal with it? Direction sense questions. So if you follow the standard directions, that would be easy for us to deal with this question. So what are the standard directions? This is north, well this is south, east and uh, west. Now look at this question, what she does. From a point D, so let's say this is starting point D. She starts from there, walked 50 meters to the north. So she started from here, walked 50 meters to the north, 50. So now she's facing this direction. Then after turning to the right, she walked 50 more meters. From here, she turned to the right and she walked for another 50 meters. She again turned right. Now she is facing this direction. From there she turned right. That means towards this direction. Again turned right and walked 70 meters. So this is 70 meters. And finally turned to right and walked 50 meters. From here she turned right. Right means towards this direction because she is facing this direction from that is her right so she turned right and walked for 50 meters. In which direction and at what distance is she from the starting point D? So this is her starting point D. Now she is here. This is the final point. So final point is in which direction of D? That is south, correct? So south and what is this distance? We know that this is 50. So up to here it is 50. This total is 70, so balance is what? 20. So this is 20, this is 20. <coughs> Distance is 20, and which direction she is? South. So 20 meters to the south. That's the answer. Number 70. Select the correct option that will fill the blank, fill in the blank and complete the series. So this is letter series type question. CAB, CAB, GEF. L, J, K, R, P, Q. We'll look at the first letters. C, G. C is 3, G is 7. So 3 plus 4 is 7. Then this is 12. So 7 plus 5 is 12. And this is 18. So plus 6. L plus 6 is R. So next one must be 4, 5, 6. Next one must be 7. So, well, R is 18. 18 plus 7 must be 25. So, Y would be the first letter. So, this case, this one cannot be the answer. This one cannot be the answer. There are two answer choices starting from Y. So, we look at the second, second letter, A and E. So, A is 1, E is 5. So, plus 4 and this is 10. So, plus 5. 
then p is 16 so plus 6 16 plus 7 that's 23 so 23 is w so y w so this cannot be the answer so this is the answer y w x and if you want to check out the third letter exam point of view you don't need to check the third letter but if you want to have a practice you want to check the third letter this is what b and f b is 2 f is 6 so 4 is the difference and this is 6 and this is 11 5 is the difference and this is 11 and this is 17 so 6 Next one must be 7, 17 plus 7, 17 plus 7 is 24, so that must be x, so y, w, x. Well, next one, pointing to a lady, Divagar said, her mother's only grandson is my son. Pointing to a lady, so this is the lady here, so that's lady is a female. So there is no need to mark a female, right? Because lady is a female. So pointing to that lady, Devagar said, her mother's, this lady's mother. This is the mother. Of course, mother is a female. So that lady's mother's only grandson. So mother's only grandson is my son. Who says it? Devagar says it. So this lady's Mother's only grandson is the son of Devaga. If this lady's mother's only grandson is the son of this lady, is the son of this lady, then that son is the son of Devagar. That's the son of Devagar as well. So this lady and Divagar are married, is it? How is that lady related to Divagar? His wife? So pointing to a lady, Divagar said, her mother's only grandson is my son. So that lady's mother and mother's only grandson. That's a son of Devagar. So Devagar is married to that lady. And well, how is that lady related to Devagar? From Devagar's point of the point of view, that lady is her wife. Is his wife. Well, is there any other possibility? Is there any other possibility? Let's say that lady is here. That lady's mother is here. Mother. And well, that uh, mother's only grandson. So let's say this mother is the mother of Divagar as well. So this is the mother of Divagar as well. So this mother's only grandson is the son of Divagar. And this lady doesn't have a son. So this lady's mother and mother has two children. One of that is a lady and the other one is Divagar. And Divagar's son is the only grandson of this lady. Possible. So that means this lady and Divagar are siblings. So ultimately that lady is the sister of Divagar. So sister and wife it's possible so the question has some kind of a logical error there's a previous question sometimes that may happen in a real exam so that case what you have to do you mark either one of this answer don't mark both answers if you have an answer choice given like third answer choice is given us either two or four then you can mark that but in this case don't mark two and four either mark two answer choice two or mark answer to choice four then usually what happens if there is some kind of a logical error with that question usually they cancel that question after the exam this is what happens all right so usually you know what if such a question appears in the exam they may give you an answer choice as well after the exam but you can challenge that answer choice this case, this question, 
what the answer choice is given as two. Two means sister. Well, there is nothing wrong with that answer. At the same time, wife is a correct answer as well. So be aware of these kind of questions. Which answer figure will complete the pattern, the question figure? The question figure, this is the question figure here. That means we have different pieces. So when we put all these pieces together, what kind of an answer we get? Either it's answer choice one or two or three or four. That's a question. So look at it. Here we have two semicircles, right? So we put it together, those semicircles put it together, we get a full circle. However, yeah, the shape is not really correct. So they try to make that shape, but you know what? The shapes are not really perfect. So that's, it's a bit confusing. That's the reason. Uh, anyhow, so, so it can be a circle and well, this shape, that shape where it come from, is it the same shape? No, it is not. So one cannot be the answer. We can rule out. And second one, sec I mean, second one here. Look at third one. Circle is perfectly all right. You get it from two half circles. And how about these triangles? It looks exactly, it doesn't look exactly the same. And how about this two? Answer choice two. Well, these two triangles, of course, these two triangles are here. Fine. Triangles are here. One and two. One and two are here. How about this, uh, like these parts? Yeah, it is here. So we can take it as three and this is four. So three and four are here. And this conical kind of figure, it is here, not exactly as it is, but it is. it can be here. And this one cannot be the answer. You can rule out. So this is the best answer. Two is the best answer. Kamal starts walking from his home facing west. Okay, so let's take a quick look at that question. Another direction sense question. So he started walking from his home facing west. So this is towards west. After walking 10 kilometers, he takes a right turn. So after walking 10 kilometers, so this is his home. After walking 10, he takes a right turn. So that means towards north and walks another 10 kilometers another 10 kilometers. Then he takes another right turn. From here he takes another right turn, that means towards east, and walks another 10 kilometers. So now he reached here, this point. How far in kilometers and in which direction he is from his home? So this is his home, he is right here. So the distance, this is 10, so this is 10 as well. So where is he now? From the point of view of his house, he is at what? North. So 10 kilometers north. So 10 north. That's the answer. But select the term that will come next in the following series. Y, C, L, M, Q, Z, O, S, B. We'll take just the first letters as we have done earlier. Y is 25 and M is what 13, so that difference is 12, so minus 12. Then uh, if you take M 13, 13 minus 12, that can be A. Okay, so the first letter of your answer can be A. So this one cannot be the answer, this one cannot be the answer. How about the second letter? C, C is 3. 3 and this one is 17. So 3 plus 14 is 17. 17 plus 14 is what? 31. So 30, 31, that letter is E. If 31 is E, so A, E. We have two answer choice, A, E, N and A, D, M. So A, E, N is the answer. So that means we don't need to check the third letter. Without checking it, you have the answer, A, E, N. Now question 75. Select the fraction that will next in the following series. So this is something like a fraction. However, that not really clearly mentioned here. So it's 2 by 4, 4 by 5, 
6 by 7, 8 by 9, 10 by 11, 12 by 13. So next one must be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Next one must be 14. So 14 by, so this is 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, so 15. So what? 14 by 15. So the answer choices would be like, looks like this. So 14 by 15. So 14 by 15, this is the answer. So now we have done another set. Hope you have a pretty good idea of what type of questions are expected in CUET. And this questions are relatively easier than the first set of questions we have discussed. So you see that difference, right? So this is pretty much the same level of a CUET exam. So be confident, do your best, and keep on practicing these kind of questions until we meet next time. Thank you for watching.